In this video, I'm going to give you five specific methods on how you can talk to the universe and start asking it for what you want. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Law of Attraction epilogue series. Now, due to all the audio problems I had recording this video the first time around, I figured I would make an updated and revised edition of this video for those of you who have a hard time hearing me in the first edition. I had no idea this video was going to go viral when I first recorded it, and since it has, I figured it's probably worth updating. So without further ado, here is How to Talk to the Universe version 2.0. So in order to understand how we talk to the universe, you must first understand one fundamental thing. The only reason that the manifest universe exists is to reflect consciousness. So all of your reality and life experience is essentially one grand audition for your attention. You are like the sun in the solar system. If the sun in the solar system were to wither and die, then everything in the entire solar system would also wither and die. Nothing in the solar system can live or exist without the sun. And the same is true for your experience of your reality. Every thought, every feeling, every sensation and perception that you have is 100% entirely dependent on your energy in order to sustain itself. Thoughts are just empty vessels that carry energy. They have no energy in and of themselves, meaning that whatever thoughts you give no attention to cannot exist. And so the law of attraction is always watching what thoughts you are supplying your energy to. And that is the first step to understanding how we communicate with the universe. The problem arises because we are unconscious of the fact that this is happening at all given times. And so it's important to realize that Regardless of what happens in your life experience, you actually don't have to experience it. I know that sounds crazy to the thinking mind, but it's absolutely an inarguable fact. If you decide not to pay attention to something, from your vantage point, it's as if it never happened. So for example, you might be in the same room as somebody else when an argument breaks out, and they pay attention to it, let it rifle them up and get them all angry, and you simply ignore it. And so for one person, they witnessed an argument break out and I just can't believe how rude she was and oh, I would have just slapped her silly, let me tell you one thing. But for you, nothing happened at all. And so your state of being, or in law of attraction terms, your vibrational frequency was not affected. And this is obviously a meditative skill that does take some practice to develop, especially depending upon the intensity of the event. But over time, you can develop the state of mind where no matter what happens externally, you can simply allow it to be there without getting emotionally involved. And therefore, it does not affect you internally. And so as you cultivate this practice, you begin to learn the powerful art form of how to keep your energy to yourself. We're very accustomed to hearing in law of attraction circles that thoughts create reality. Now this is hypothetically speaking true, but what's more true fundamentally is not that thoughts create reality, but intention. Because again, thoughts are simply empty vessels. They have no energy in and of themselves. They are simply auditioning for your attention and saying, hey, would you like to energize this idea? And you either say yes, and you give it your attention and assign it significance, or you say, no thank you, that's not for me, and you ignore it. And so the thoughts which you select with your attention tell the energy that you supply the thought which direction to go into. And so in that sense, negative thoughts are your own energy used against you. So the key is that we want to give our attention to thoughts that resonate with us, that make us feel good, and are high vibrational thoughts. And we want to obviously ignore the thoughts which are lower in vibration and don't resonate with us. And that's really the essence of how we communicate with the universe. So I'm gonna give you five different methods on how to do just that, starting with number one. Start paying attention to your attention. From the time that you're born, the universe starts asking you, hey, what do you want? And so the critical question to ask is, how do we say yes to something we want from the universe? And how do we say no to something that we don't want? 
Scientifically speaking, we know that the universe is made up of ones and zeros. It's all a gigantic binary data set. And so practically speaking, we can say that a one would represent yes and a zero would represent no. And this is because the universe only speaks energy. And so if the universe presents you with something, any vibrational reaction you give to it is a one, is saying, yes, please give me more of that from the universe's perspective. And so if you don't want something, then you want to give it a zero. You want to ignore it. In the same way that you would ignore one of those annoying mall salesmen who tries to sell you perfume when you walk by. And so when you do this, the universe says, oh, okay, he or she clearly doesn't want this because they're not giving it any of their attention. Everything is fighting for your energy and where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So if you're stuck in a negative thought pattern, that's because it's juicy, it works on you. Every time that it comes up, you give it your energy. And so the universe looks at that and says, wow, he or she really likes this thought pattern, so let's just keep cranking it out. This person seems to really like this type of circumstance, so let's just keep cranking it out. Until you start ignoring it, you're gonna keep getting it because the universe is just your servant. It's just here to reflect what you want. But you have to understand that it's not looking at what you say or what you tell your friends or what you post on Instagram. It's only looking at the most authentic expression of what you really want, which is wherever you place your attention. Number two, think and speak in the present tense. From the universe's perspective, the only thing it knows is now. So although we can think and speak in the past or future tenses, we can only feel in the present. And so that's why it is unhelpful to think and speak in the past or future tense rather than the present tense. And so if your affirmation is, I will be successful, I will be successful. Well, the universe is actually hearing, I don't wanna be successful right now. So instead, you wanna make your affirmation into, I am successful. I am successful. True manifestation always begins by feeling as though you are already what you want to attract. Because in a very real sense, you are. From the universe's perspective, you are everything. You're simply selecting what you want to experience with your attention in this moment. But every possible reality already exists. Meaning, the thing you want, the person you want to become, already exists. So you can literally step into the reality where you are successful by thinking and believing that you are. It's always about what you believe to be true regardless of the circumstances. So you can start to feel what it would be like if you were already successful. And then consciousness will begin to collapse around that feeling and begin to bring you what you desire. Number three, expand your consciousness. Why would this be relevant? Well, because the more expanded your consciousness is, then the less and less you're going to be duped and tricked into giving your energy to things you don't actually want to energize. And so another way of saying expanding consciousness is to say expanding your awareness. And this is very important because life is not like a story that has a beginning and an end. Life is much more like a game. And if you understand the rules of the game you're playing, then you give yourself a much better chance at winning. But if you don't understand the rules of the game you're playing, then winning is impossible. So let's consider how a poker game works. If you were sitting at a table with a bunch of expert poker players and you barely know how to play poker, well, they're gonna take full advantage of you. Every time that they make a bluff, you take their actions at face value and fall right into their trap. And every time that you draw a hand, you're telegraphing your hand to everyone else because you're reacting based upon the cards that you're seeing and so they know what cards you probably have in relation to what cards they have. You stand absolutely zero chance of ever beating these guys until you expand your consciousness. The more variables you learn, the more rules you learn about the game, the better and better you can play. And so your consciousness expands every time that you learn more variables or rules in the universe that you were previously unaware of. And so once you understand the game you're playing, then you can begin to take control of the game and start making the right moves. Number four, listen to your guidance system. 
So you've probably heard me say in other videos that the universe does not speak English or Spanish, it speaks energy. And this is not because the universe is dumb or something, but simply the fact that energy is what the universe is. And human language is really just a modulation of energy. It's the way that we package energy into sounds that we make with our mouths. The fact of the matter is that our thoughts and words are extremely unreliable. One minute we really know what we want, another minute we have no idea what we want. And so the universe is not going to waste its time listening to our thoughts and words which are all over the place, because it doesn't have to. It can simply read your state of being, your vibrational frequency, to see exactly what it is you truly desire. And so because of this, the guidance system that we must listen to is our feelings. When we focus on something that doesn't line up with what we truly want deep down, we are made to feel a negative emotion. And when we focus on something that lines up with what we do want, we are made to feel a positive emotion. And this is why I often say to see only what resonates. Follow what feels good. And the chief rebuttal I hear from this is that people might say, well, you can't just do what feels good all the time because you might go cuss somebody out because you think it'll feel good. But what I mean when I say follow what feels good is follow what makes you feel more at peace, more joyful, more connected, more expansive. Because yes, the ego will try to trick you into thinking that cussing that person out will feel really good. And this is exactly why it's important to follow your internal guidance system and not your mind. Because the truth is, you only want to cuss that person out because you already don't feel good. You're already rifled up and pissed off. And your internal guidance system is trying to tell you that this is a negative energy and it's not going to give you what you want. So ignore it and move on. So it's really the simplest thing. You're already amazing at knowing what feels good and what feels bad. You don't need any education in this. You can't even get any better at it. This is what you are absolutely the best at. So from this point forward to the best of your ability, give your attention to what makes you feel good and give no significance to what makes you feel bad. Number five, utilize the power of repetition. If we want to understand how the universe works, then we don't need to look any further than our own subconscious mind. The law of attraction works exactly the same way that our subconscious mind works, because in truth, they are actually one. Again, our conscious mind is all over the place and is a very unreliable source of information. But whatever's in the subconscious mind is there because you've allowed it there by giving it enough energy to condense it into your frequency. And that is what the law of attraction is looking at. So I'm going to give you three important differences to understand between the conscious and the subconscious mind. The first distinction is that the subconscious mind does not have the ability to reject anything. Because again, the universe sees all points of view as equally valid. The first law of the universe is the law of free will. So it's not going to decide for you what's good and what's bad, what's healthy and unhealthy. It's up to you to decide. The second distinction is that the subconscious mind cannot distinguish between real and imagination. That's why you can imagine certain scenarios and revisit past memories and feel it like it's actually happening. It's only the subconscious mind that can create feelings. That's also why we can't simply think our way out of depression or things of that nature. So it's important for us to be in the present moment and not live in the past where our painful memories live because the more we allow ourselves to obsess over past mistakes will actually attract more of those type of circumstances. And the third distinction is that the subconscious mind does not have an agenda. It's not trying to get anywhere or make anything out of you. It's literally just a filing cabinet of stored data. Whatever gets the most attention goes in the filing cabinet. All of your social conditioning from the time you were born until now is sitting in the subconscious mind. And it's not going to filter out the unhealthy thoughts for you. It's up to you to judge and interpret what things to give energy to and what things to ignore because where your attention is going is what's getting stored. We're very good at keeping track with our conscious mind, but not so good at keeping track with our subconscious mind. And the truth is that the conscious mind is sort of just like the gatekeeper, the tip of the iceberg. But the subconscious mind is where the party is happening. And likewise, the ego is in the subconscious mind. 
which is why even though none of us want to have an ego that makes us suffer, we nevertheless have one anyways, because the ego is a program. And so if we want to get rid of our negative thought patterns, then we have to stop energizing them. And this is where we can start utilizing the power of repetition. Let's suppose that you are a very insecure person who wants to manifest themselves into a confident person. The best place to start would be to just repeat to yourself every day that I am the most confident person in the world. Make that your mantra and continue to repeat it consistently and you will actually begin to reprogram your subconscious mind. But it is important that you don't just say the words, but that you try to feel what it would actually be like if you really were the most confident person in the world. And so it doesn't actually matter if you're not confident yet, because what you see in your life now is just a remnant of what you've been focusing on in the past. So if there is a book you read that makes you feel really good, if there's a podcast or a YouTube video that makes you feel more confident, then keep watching and reading it over and over again, and you will start to see the inner transformation begin to happen. It's very important that you saturate your mind with the things that you want because the ego is constantly at work trying to reinforce the opposite of what you want. And usually we listen to these thoughts of fear and doubt and then create stronger programs in the subconscious mind to reinforce them. But we can do the exact same thing with positive thoughts instead. The more you focus on it, the more the subconscious mind begins to create it into a program and very soon it begins to condense into an energetic form. And at that point, you no longer have to try to be confident, but you just start feeling naturally and effortlessly more confident because you built the program. So in closing, something we hear all the time is that you are the universe. And so talking to the universe is really just you talking to your higher self. It's you that's running the show and it's you that's in the driver's seat. Only you control your state of being because you are the center of your universe and nobody else can come into your center and fix things for you. You've got to do it. So begin to take charge of your internal world and don't tolerate these energies to reside within you that would keep you from the happiness and joy that you want. Happiness is your birthright and the universe wants you to have it. So you don't need vision boards and sticky note affirmations and hours of visualization because the universe already knows what you want. When you cleanse yourself and purify your own state of being, then you become a magnet to everything that is good. And that is how you truly talk to the universe.